Fear not, Scranton. This is Pastor Elliot Cook from Jackson Street Baptist Church here on the west side of the greatest city in Pennsylvania, Scranton. And uh, I'm here with a word from the Lord for you here this day. Hear the word of the Lord. In Judges chapter 6, starting in verse 25, we read this account of Gideon and his family and swimming against the currents, so to speak, of the community, of the neighborhood, of their village, and uh, Gideon even going against his family in this passage. Perhaps you felt like that. <clears throat> Listen up and hear the word of the Lord. That same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull from your father's herd and one of the one seven years old, tear it down your father's altar to Baal and cut the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer a second bull as an offering. So Joshua took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the townspeople, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the people of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished with the Asherah pole beside it, cut down, and a second bull sacrifice on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told Gideon, the son of Joash, did it. The people of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, Are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning, implying that he and his family would rise up uh, against their fellow visitors to defend his son. If Baal really is God, he can defend himself uh, when someone breaks down his altar. So because Gideon broke down uh, Baal's altar, they gave him the, nail, the name um, Jerub Baal uh, that day, saying, let Baal contend with him. And uh, Gideon's father was able to plead with them. You know, if Baal really is God, if he's almighty and powerful, then he will be able to defend himself. He doesn't need you to defend him. Um, it's good to have zeal for the Lord. Um, the Lord wants us to plead uh, his case. He wants us to, to be witnesses for him, yes. Uh, but uh, God can still take care of himself. And uh, I would remind us Christians of that uh, simple truth that Joe Ash had to, to share with his, his uh, neighbors. Hey, that hostile crowd wanted Gideon's life. Uh, he was the youngest in the family, uh, Gideon. And he, he went against his family. And apparently uh, there wasn't a great uh, ardent uh, following in their hearts when they had this, this altar to Baal on their property or the Asherah pole on their property. Uh, they were cultural followers of what the community was, was practicing. And uh, when their son stood up against it and tore it down and built a proper altar to the Lord and... and the family rallied around him, or at least his father did. And, uh, you know, there's respect that comes from commitment, from devotion. When you step out in faith and do the hard thing, um, you gain people's respect. And even in the village, even though people uh, wanted their Asherah pole so that they could worship Baal, they they started to realize that Joash was right. If, if Baal really is God, then he will defend um, himself. And, and they handed the situation over uh, to Baal. And of course, Baal isn't a real god. <laughs> he can do nothing. And so Gideon flourished, actually, and perhaps uh, led a revival and turned the hearts of the people back to the one true God, Yahweh, uh, who loved them so and provided for them and would even use um, Gideon to deliver them uh, from the Midianites and from the oppression that they were going through. Well, it all starts with revival, turning your heart to Christ. If that's your need, why don't you pray this prayer with me? 
maybe you've been chasing the Baals, the false gods in this day and age, and you've been pursuing the wrong Lord. And I encourage you to remember that Jesus, God's son, died on the cross for your sins. And if he did that, he's willing to forgive you of your sin and you can have eternal life. Um, all you have to do is pray this prayer. Pray it with me, won't you? Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. I do believe that Jesus died for me. Forgive me. Make me your child. From this day forward, help me to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly surrendered your life, all of it, uh, not just your sins, but your future, your decisions, if, if you're willing to put aside your, your false gods, if you're willing to give up those things that you have been pursuing that you thought were the answer uh, to all of life's questions and put all your trust in God, then he will forgive you and he will be with you always, never leaving you, never forsaking you. Even in the midst of a pandemic, he is here with us, Scranton. Uh, he has not abandoned us. He has not forgotten us. Just wanted to remind you, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you do have to go against the crowd. And um, when you do, your, strength is, your, your faith is strengthened and the Lord is blessed. He is pleased with your life. Your prayers can be more powerful uh, when you step out for him in faith and uh, kick against the goads, swim against the current. Well, this is Pastor Elliot Cook of Jackson Street Baptist Church signing off, reminding you, fear not, Scranton.